Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Uncensored Journey podcast. Today, we have a special guest on Highlighting Our Stars. As you all know, Highlighting Our Stars is a segment dedicated to highlighting those who are using their platform, using their daily life to make a positive impact in society. And so today we have Mamur Nyai, who is an educator, who is definitely working in higher education to you know, make an impact on our students and our, especially our international education systems. So I wanted to welcome you to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So if you want to just introduce yourself and let the people know who you are. Sure. Um, like you said, my name is Mam Jay. Um, born and raised in Senegal. Um, left Senegal probably right after high school um, to wander around the world, started in France, um, and then later ended in in the US. Um, so um, my university journey was also here in the US. Then after that, um, just, uh, I guess, continued in the workforce um, with a deep passion for higher education, um, comparing educational systems, um, helping international students mostly. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like to, you know, the, these kind of opportunities to, to share my passion at the same time, um, make new connections. So thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm I'm definitely going to get into the your professional experience, but I want to first start off with just understanding your upbringing and how that was. You say you were born in Senegal. How was that experience uh, growing up in Senegal? It was great. It was great. I, I I'm one of those people that can probably say that I, I you know I did not complain about anything. Well, I couldn't complain because you know everything was was there given to me. With um, I, I'm I'm not from you know a wealthy family, but I can say that my parents really really cared about my siblings and I, and really thought about you know, providing and giving us you know everything that we needed. They were both. Um, educators now both retired, but um, so you could understand that they really, really cared about um, school grades. Um, and if one messed up in the family, probably everybody else, brothers, <laughs> everybody would get you know punished for that same one mistake. So yeah. they were really heavy on 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 education and and kind of instilling that that passion for doing good, um, following your religion. Um, respecting people, so a, a pretty, you know, simple, nice upbringing. Like everybody else in in Dakar, I lived in Sacré Cœur, where I went to school in College Sacré Cœur, and and I went like the best high school in in Senegal. Um, everybody else can fight me later, but um, I, I <laughs> why? Think because there's this, you know, ongoing debate of people from Maris, people from, you know wherever Yalu Suren or Waka or the bougie people from Jean Mermoz and all those guys. So uh -huh. yeah, you're doing the best. But anyways, so um I, I think you know going to school in a school that was not far away from your neighborhood, hanging out like everybody, um yeah. playing so soccer sometimes in the street. Um, my friends would say that I was not the best, but I you know <laughs> it's more about having fun, I think. Um and then on top of that, you know, coming back from school, then going to Jangi Dara Al Quran, you know, coming back mm -hmm. and and trying to to manage that at the same time. So, a pretty nice, pretty nice upbringing. Being the oldest of the family was not easy, but I think. Oh, uh, how many siblings do you have? I do have three other siblings. Um, oh, okay, okay. And and uh, being the oldest, I mean, they made it easy. They pretty cool kids. They they respect me. They they listen if need be. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but they're both all wise now. They probably mm -hmm. don't need my wisdom anymore if I have any. But um, yeah, pretty chill. Um, very regular upbringing in Dakar, and very nice experience. Since you know things that you remember now, it's like wow, I really did this and that, and yeah. Mm. So you mentioned <laughs> you met one. I haven't. Not that it, I know it's not. I know it's there, but I haven't really heard, you know, mostly it's like 
I had this really negative experience in Senegal and you're here like, hey, I had a really good experience in Senegal when it comes to my upbringing. And so, you know, I appreciate you sharing that perspective because sometimes that's even why um, I wanted to establish this show is because frequently I'll hear, you know, Senegal, I'm a there's nothing in Senegal. I can't um, do anything in Senegal. And so I really wanted to highlight those uh, around the world, but especially in Senegal, who are actually really great resources uh, for our Senegalese people so that we can actually notice, like, you know, shine light on the people that are actually doing the work. So it's, it's a it's a good thing to hear the positive experiences as well. Um, so you said you were in school. How was your experience in school when it comes to like the Senegalese education system? You know, well, back then, that's the only thing we knew. So comparing it was was a little bit difficult. We, we couldn't do much mm. of that. We, but for, so for me, back then, it was good. Now, there's the private and the public system, right? You have the public schools. And then I know my parents sacrificed for all, all the family, everybody else to, to go in a private school system, right? My my dad was the superintendent, so he understood the system. He understood the educational system and sacrificed for us to attend a private school, a mm. private Catholic school, actually. Um, really? Which is very interesting. Um, now that you think about it, you know, going to school yeah. where, where in the country where it's what ninety five percent Muslim, the best schools, unfortunately, in Dakar, um, except for maybe. Lamin Gay or another one, Sayyidina Ali Mamula in Gejo, right? The best schools are usually um, the, 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 the private Catholic schools. So you would have Cathedral, Maris, Sarreke, you know, those are the top schools with where there's no strikes, there's no, you know, um, disruption in, 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 the, in the curriculum and things like that. And I think oh. my parents understood that and sent us there. Every morning you would have to walk in and do the Catholic prayer. Um, everybody would stand what? every morning. And I did that for seven years. I know it by heart in French, you know. <laughs> um, but Really? It, oh, yeah. It's it's a different, different system. It's, uh, my school was ran by um, the, the, the Canadian Catholic priest um, who were there in conjunction with, with Senegalese people as well. And, and uh, oh, the only thing that you had to show your respect was to respect their religion and they respect your religion. So in the classroom, there was, you know, that little cross of Jesus, you know, in every single classroom, there was everything about, about you know, Catholicism. But, you know, at the same time, when it's time for them to do prayers and everything, you would be in your corner and do um, learn something about um, moral education or civics and things while they do prayers on the side or in another yeah. classroom. But you know your best friends end up becoming you being you know people you met there you know catholics you know my best friend is is catholic you know i attended his wedding i went there i'm you know very close to him and his family but you know yeah. so religion is not something that kind of divided us and and we, yeah. we we learned very much to do well in school um and at the same time being good human beings that's something um, I can definitely say that I learned at, at Sarreke, you know, so mm -hmm. a very nice educational journey there, I would mm -hmm. say, you know, um, trying to always be the best. Um, the more you grow, you start, you know, becoming a teenager, grades start slipping a little bit and parents will remind you, hey, you know, we yeah. need you to keep it up. And um, so we, we 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 did with what we had, which was more than than we realized that we were kind of privileged in a sense, um, um, you know, in a sense comparing to other people um, in our neighborhood who probably were attending another school, you know, taking the car up it every morning, going to school, and um, sometimes there would be a, a strike by the, from the professors, and school would not happen for them. So we were on time with our calendar. We were on time for exams. We had to very best preparation for exams. And when it came to the BFM and the BAC, we were ready. We were always top of the of the country because mm -hmm. we, we knew that we had that, that preparation. You know, some people would not like to okay. accept, you know, when you hear Sarekeur and those schools, they will tell you, you know, there's this uh, idea that comes with those schools because of, of the kind of students that, that were attending that school. So I haven't, I haven't really, interacted with someone who went to a Catholic school in Senegal. So I, I definitely want to learn more about that. What do you feel like 
was the benefit. I think you mentioned one where you felt like the curriculum was more rigorous. I think that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so you were able to adjust to, uh, you know, the academics. But what do you feel like were was a benefit of attending a Catholic school? And what do you feel like was a challenge? I think the, the benefit was was learning how to be good human beings without, you know, anything else being forced on you. They were Catholics. We were Muslims. It was their religion was not forced on us. Right. And I think Ooh. I have this anecdote. One thing. Uh, so right next to the school or at least a mile away from the school days, um, this international orphanage called SOS that's very famous around the world. And yeah. SOS, so SOS kids actually who get to the high school level will sometimes, or most of them actually, will get to Sakekur for free. Um, mm-hmm. And then it would bring a different kind of population because Sakekur was sometimes known as some of the bougie kids, you know, from this kind of family. So mixing different backgrounds in the classroom was an, an, an unbelievable experience right because you get to now learn from other people and and even the, as a kid you sometimes try to understand wow you know i don't have the same upbringing as this person but i'm learning so much from him my best friend came from a you know the school where president Senghor studied in Nyaning in in gazobil over there like way past chess in joal really and a car and studying at, at school and it just was an experience because I knew that part my whole life. He came from somewhere else and shared, you know, um, a, a little bit, you know, about his experience. And same thing with other friends that I made back there. So one thing that I learned is definitely, I think, the ability to not judge, the ability to to yeah. just welcome people without forcing anything on them and just being being genuine and natural. Um, yeah. And then I think the, on the other side, um, and I wouldn't call it a challenge, but I would say that the privilege you know the privilege is something that was very noticeable when we went to take our exams at other schools we would walk in and and saw some slight differences you know compared to other people and and we knew that those people at those schools were good really really good but unfortunately it was just you know because they were in the public school system we were in the private system there was a slight difference in in you know, some things, but we knew that if they were in our school, they would probably, you know, outrank all of us. But unfortunately, it was not the case for some schools. And and that later you understand that the, the educational system in Senegal is a little bit, what's the word? It's a little bit behind, I would say. Um, yeah. uh, and, yeah, but, but again, you know, it's never too late to, to change things like that. Yeah, that's really interesting. I could, I could probably ask you a million questions about that, but I'm definitely going to move on. But I, what I will say is that I think that absolutely speaks to the open mindedness of your of your parents that I think not. I think I know that their value for education was much more important to make sure that they put you all in an environment where you're going to get the quality education and thinking beyond religion and thinking mm-hmm. beyond like cultural norms. So I really appreciate that because I very I very rarely hear for like someone who's like Muslim going to a Catholic school and being able to understand that experience. Um, So yeah, thank you for sharing that. I wanted to dive into into your background, your professional um, history. So I see that you have had many leadership positions within the higher education system in the US. And of course, previously working internationally. Uh, For now, I wanna focus on the U.S. So I definitely see that previously you were assistant director of undergraduate admissions and at multiple institutions and then senior assistant director and then now being the associate director of international admissions. So I want to know when it comes to your experience working at admissions, what would you say what would you say was the best part of it where you felt like you made an impact that's a good question. I, I think I, I'll take a I'll take a quick step back because mm-hmm. I think it, it relates to it's connected to to the reason why at first I, I got in the field and and it's, yeah. I came to the U.S. as I can call it an international student, um, mm-hmm. but at the same time I had the luxury of not having to worry about visas and things like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So I went to college and I met peers from other African countries that 
we're on a student visa, right? And, and okay. sometimes saying some things or asking questions to some people or talking mm -hmm. to leadership were not, you know, was not something that they felt right because they were scared, they were new to the country. And for some reason, me, I guess, the Senegalese buddy decided to, you know, <laughs> put the combabi, you know. <laughs> So anything that they would need, sometimes I'll go to those offices and talk and mm -hmm. kind of you know, see how we can go to the social security office or how can we open a bank account if we don't get the help we need, right? Yeah. And and things like that. So So you were already advocating prior to your roles. <laughs> exactly. And 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 then so gra after graduating college, you know, I, I started this position. I had a job lined up and everything after college and it was in the corporate world. Um but after 10 months, I just felt like this was not me. You know, I was in this cubicle um, sharing reports to people and I could see the numbers that the company was making. And I, it was nothing compared to what we were making. And, and, and also realizing that you are not in those rooms where decisions are made. Um, you're, you're just pretty much one number in the cubicle. And if they need to get rid of you, they will get rid of you. Right? They will. Until until I went back to my community college and met um, my former supervisor when I was working as a as a work study um, as a as a student worker on campus, and and met this lady it was like, well, we have a position open here, and um, we would be talking to students and 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 stuff in the St. Louis area, and I jumped right on it um, because it was a way for me to know the city of St. Louis. I knew the safe parts. I knew the sides of St. Louis. I never, you know, tried to endeavor, you know, in other parts of St. Louis because why may I book Senegal? And I'm much more fearful than fair, you know. So yeah. you have to, have to stay away from some corners and things. And then so that job really allowed me to connect with um with mm -hmm. St. Louis. And from there I just felt like, yes, I'm doing it at the domestic level, but then my international friends, my international peers that are coming to the U.S. completely lost. You know, who's, who's who's helping them? Who's who's talking to their families? Who's telling them, hey, your son can come to the U.S. and do well? Who's, you know, doing all of that? And, you know, from there, I started applying to job. We, I think two years later, um, started to at Washington University in St. Louis and trying to focus a little bit more now on the international market, the different curriculums, you know, higher education, what it means for international students, what value do we have compared to other countries in, in the world, and how um, are we helping those students um, from the moment they learn about the institution, from the moment they think about applying to the moment they join the, U the, the university in the U.S., and all the way to matriculating four years later when it's time for to graduate. So. Right. Overall, yes, that's that's kind of the the the, the reason why I started, and I think um, since then it's constant learning curve, but still mm -hmm. happy to to do it. Yeah, and what would you think? Is there a story that you think of when you feel like this was a moment where I absolutely know I made a positive impact? Is there like an experience that you've had or that you would like to um, share? With me? I I. <laughs> I, I want to give a shout out to a very a person who's dear to me. She's my little sister. I, she's a current oh. student at WashU, um, and we're not related by blood. But I think you know, through the time she started applying for schools, and my brother connecting me with her, and me helping on just reading her application, reading her essay, and things like that, yeah. I felt joy in doing it. But at the yeah. same time. I realized that once she got admitted and you know started doing well and connecting with me all the time, I realized that I played a 0.01 percent, you know, really? role in her in her journey, and that you know allowed me to say, well, if, you know, even if I'm not being recognized somewhere else, at least I feel like the fact that this person is still in contact with me and I'm still doing yeah. this work and and you know was a positive impact so i think that was one moment some years ago where i felt like eh, maybe i'm doing something right yeah no absolutely i think students definitely um gravitate towards people who make them feel the most welcome the most comfortable and even in in my work in admissions now it's like 
I have international students that they'll come to me and talk to me because they know that I understand certain aspects of being in education and being from an African family that they may not be able to tell other people because then they'll think like, oh, you're you're crazy or no, it's not like oh, that. Yeah. Just, talk, just talk to your parents. They'll understand. Like, listen, <laughs> you know, it's certain cultural conversations that can't be had um, or lack people may lack understanding of that. I think definitely having people like you in the space helps to balance out a little bit because of the predominantly white institutions, but I'm definitely, I'm sure that they appreciate your presence. When it comes to the admissions process, whether international students, domestic students, what do you feel like is a, is a challenge? The challenge, well, there are many, um, I, I believe, but I think, uh, the, the challenge is one that I could notice, I think, or I would say is the fact that unfortunately, you know, not everyone can come and study to the US because it is one of the most expensive educational system in the world. Um, so I think the challenge is that in my job, at least, you know, not being able yeah. to admit people that I want to admit for lack of, you know, scholarships or funding, for example, is something that really, really um, does not sit well with me. But at the same time, you know, you are in a country where the opportunities are offered, you know, the education system is pretty strong, depending on who you're asking. Um, and, and, and at the same time, you know, it offers new it opens new doors for for students yeah. that that come from those places. But I think the challenge it, this is a personal challenge, not the job I would say, but a personal challenge is that I wish I had billions of dollars where I could have yeah. every single student who applied to get the chance to study and and do well in in this um, in this system. Yeah, no, absolutely. Finance is definitely a challenge. Um, so I want to follow up with that. With what do you think about the student loan forgiveness program? <laughs> Is it happening? Did you get your loan forgiven? Because I haven't heard no. from Uncle Joe. I haven't heard. <laughs> Wasted my time. Wasted my time. I, 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 I see it as a political move. I, nothing more. I, I, I think um, it was a campaign promise that later on they try to make happen with a bunch of um i guess asterisks or notes on yeah. the you have to really have to read the fine print to understand that even that forgiveness program was not for everyone um yeah, so no. honestly it's if someone can try to not take a loan, do so. But again, you know, not everybody is in that situation. So, but it's not something that I even care about because <laughs> yeah. I, see as, I see it as a political move. It, yeah, it absolutely was a political move. And I agree with you. Like, I feel like our US system, it's very expensive. It's mm -hmm. unnaturally expensive. I'm pretty sure it doesn't cost this much. Um, to go to college. I don't know where the money is going, but one thing I will say is because of me being first gen, going back to you saying, if you can't, if you, if you cannot take a loan, do that. I really try my best to make sure that people know about the scholarships because the mistakes that I made, I don't want someone else to have that burden on them or, or make them feel like they're trapped or anything. And I mean, it was a learning, a learning experience, but I really wish that when it, especially when it comes to international education, that there is more funding. Because I, I clearly see that the money is there, you know, especially with the aid that they're providing internationally to countries in conflict. If the money is there, I think definitely not waiting until there's a huge conflict because the education system, it helps mitigate those conflicts if we invest our money properly. So we don't have to get into reactive performative if we Put the money where it should be in the first place. So, yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. So, okay. I want to talk about your experience working at a predominantly white institution. Um, okay. So, <laughs> how do you feel? Well, well, I say, what was your experience working at predominantly white institutions as a Black 
man, do you feel like you had mostly positive experiences or you had challenges? Of course, you don't have to name an institution. It could just be an institution that you attended or that you worked at or, you know, uh, what do you feel like was a positive experience in a challenge? I'll be honest. This is me and my answer. Mm -hmm. I, from my professional experience, it's been positive. But the reason why mm -hmm. was my undergrad kind of prepared me for it. Mm -hmm. um, I, okay. I I went to, uh, my undergrad was in a very, very small town in the state of Missouri, three mm -hmm. and a half hours away from the city of St. Louis. And I think what prepared me is that yeah. walking in a university where I want to say there was maybe 200 black people, um, mm. you know, and I'm talking African-American, Africans, everyone. Across the board, yeah. Um, and, and one, building a community with my people was a first step. But at the same time, learning from other peers' experiences and learning how to deal with those and having my own issues with some professors and some administrators and things like that kind of prepared me once I got into the real world. Yeah. And once I got into the real world, I had to strip myself away from this. Um, there's something they teach us or we, we, we are grown with in, in Senegal or in Africa that you have to respect this oldest. You have to speak with this kind of way. You have to wait until you're given your turn into, you know, before you speak and things like that. I'm sorry, but professionally in a meeting, it does not work like that. In a professional setting, it does not work like that. You have to come and go and get what yours. Go and get what's yours. Yeah. You, you sit down, you you know, you do your work and then you just sit down and just watch. People will take credit for everything mm -hmm. that you've done. People will yeah. step on your toes. And for them, it's this journey where they're just trying to go up the ranks and everything. And I think once I understood that, I had moments where where mm. I am a very chill person in the office. I am cool with everyone. But then when I need to say something, when I need to speak, oh, you will hear from me. Um, yeah. I do not care who you are, but I will. you will hear my voice. And I think um, my first job in admission, someone very dear to me also, a former supervisor told me, uh, my first six month review, <laughs> the only thing she had to say was, please speak up. And I said, <laughs> from now on, I think, I think I've learned a lesson. You need yeah. to speak up. And, and from okay. there, I think um, that was a very small, very short comment, but very useful for the rest of my professional journey. No, because that was powerful. I, I was able to now share the same message to people who are starting in the field and say, hey, you do mm. something, take 100% of the credit, you know, do not try to, because if the the situations were reversed, I'm telling you, these people will not, you know, let you get that W, so. You know what? I think I, pro I probably needed to hear that, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I, I'm, as you're talking, I'm like, oh, he ta he's talking to me, because I'll, I'll very frequently be like, I'll, I do something, I'll be like, oh, we did it as a team, and no, we didn't. No, I did. No, yeah. Yeah. Take credit. Take credit. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. Well, I do it, but I don't do it as frequently as I probably should. But one thing I do want to say, I'm so happy you had that experience. And it sounds like the supervisor that you had um, was really encouraging your advocacy because that's not the experience across the board. And I'm, I find it interesting because culture does have a really big impact on how you speak up. I that conversation of respect your elders and don't question them. It used to carry over, you know, when you're working in certain fields. And honestly, I've sat on boards with African men who literally told me if my wife spoke to me like that, I would slap them. I'd be like, what? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or just, it's just really interesting. And it really wasn't even my tone. I was just questioning or challenging you or saying, I don't think that was the route we should go. And your response was, you know, shocking to me, but it didn't stop me from wanting to continue to do that. But it's something that I have to continuously remind myself to do because I am so, it's like they train you to not challenge someone who's older than you. 
and it's, yeah. a, it's a tough exercise, but then once you master it, you're able to know mm -hmm. when to apply respect and when to apply professionalism. And mm -hmm. and and I think it's it's a skill we we need to have, especially as because the culture is different. If you, I don't care how many years you stay in the U.S., 30, 50 years, they still that 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 little bit i mean if you want to and that's what that's 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 me that's who i am i want that senegalese in me that i want that african you know peace in me i will carry it everywhere i go but i know sometimes when to put it in the back pocket and just you know say my truth yeah no absolutely and i think that's a good segue into the last topic that i wanted to talk about for our english speakers um i think Personally, I think culture has a lot to do with with the way Senegal is politically. I feel like a lot of things that we could have checked maybe at the door, we let it go on for long and long and long because we felt like this is our elder. Let's not blend, you know, Ruslo. I don't know how to say that in, or make them feel like shame or question them. And I think it went too far where we let a group of people feel like they have ultimate control over a whole country to where they don't have the answer. So I want to know, what are your thoughts on the political state of Senegal and how do you think we can move forward? Hmm. Move forward? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's tricky. It's tricky. Everyone has an opinion on, on what's going on. Everyone has an opinion whether, you know, uh, for us living in the U.S. is even harder because the people will tell you, "Well, you're not on the ground. You, you can say nothing." Right. And trust, me, and trust me. You you ask you ask my family. You ask people if there's information about Senegal. I'm the person they call. I I don't have American TV in my house. I I don't. I don't, I, right. I, I am 100% Senegalese. I watch uh, the news every single morning from the morning news to everything that is happening. Yeah. In Senegal. I'm watching. So I am, I know what's going on in the country. And I think mm. the, the political state, for me to sum it up, is that next time there are elections, us, the people who have the experience in Senegal or even here, the people mm. who have the experience, the people who have the, 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 the background should run for office. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we will get to a point where you will start seeing people that were Ndare back days, back in the days when you were in, in class, or people who used to sit class, people who did not get not even a high school degree, start running these offices. And that will feel very, 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 very hard. It would it would because and it's already it's already happening. I'm and laughing I, because I'm thinking of the video where he's like. I am your mayor. What's his name? The mayor. Oh, the mayor of Chess. You know, even that guy, maybe it's just English because he's, he's, he's just English. Right yeah. <laughs> but I'll give you an example. There's, there's currently a, a person who's the, the number two or number three in the national parliament. That person, I don't care what anybody says, cannot be my leader. That person is supposed to investigate the judges in the Supreme Court or the mm -hmm. Constitutional Council with this new this new inquiry so just imagine people like that running running the 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 the, the yeah. country and then overall how do i see it is that we we voted with our emotions 12 years ago we had a president who did what he did wanted to put his son in power we said no we went out we had our ways. It was internet was not that strong back then. I was I remember with other people, those vocal people on social media and everything. People went on the ground. People did what they had to do and got rid of kind of him, and elected someone they thought was being, you know, was a victim of of the former president. And that yeah. someone who we thought was a victim um, got elected and and. Um, Wait, how did they think he was a victim? So Macky Sall, to not say his name, um, <laughs> Macky Sall is one of those people where he's he's a product of the Senegalese system. Macky Sall, anything he had, anything he earned, 
was because of the Senegalese government, Senegalese system. From his education, he went to the Senegalese public school system. His university, Makisal did not go to the US or France to study like us. Makisal stayed in Senegal. Mm. He started working. He was a director, which people say the highest level he was, he could dream of was to be the director of that petroleum company in Senegal. And before ah. that, he had companies. then from there, he went to minister of energy and petroleum and gas and things like that. Then from there, he went to prime minister. Then he went to president of the parliament and everything. So everything he had, he had this nice background, this nice resume of from one position to another, getting up the ranks. Mm -hmm. And one day we decided that, Abdullah Wada decided that there was the same thing he's accusing now of his prime minister. Or some people are accusing of his prime minister. Makisal was against him. Makisal was building, you know, this coalition against uh, behind his back and everything. Mm -hmm. And once he got kicked out of the party, kicked out of the national parliament, kicked out of everything from the government, he went out there and became the victim. Now people said, oh, we are tired of the old politicians. We got someone who is being made a victim. He is our guy. And he used that campaign on that, decided to say that we're going to get rid of Abdullah Awad. We're going to do this and that. Senegalese voted with emotions. Very much so. Because during that time, maybe there were other people, but there were other people who maybe did not carry that, you know, that card of, yes, I'm being bullied. Mm. And with that, he got elected president. Now, people say that he's bad, he's, he's this and that. Mm. I don't recall his first year being horrible. I think because the Senegalese people gave him the benefit of that, gave him the time, gave him everything mm -hmm. that he needed to succeed. And then from there, we started seeing some new attachment, Bye. some new attachment to the French government. We started seeing some people rising around him, people that were there for the people that he was able to get and keep around him. And then 12 years, fast forward 12 years later, the way to sum it up is that him, his yeah. government do not have any single, any ounce of respect for the Senegalese people. No, they don't. Because changing the constitution, changing laws and, and putting people in prison and, 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 and killing people without the single ounce of empathy or a single ounce of respect is just point blank period, the most disrespectful thing for people that elected you. Now, my thing is I'm not in Senegal. If right. someone is on the ground and wants to go there and protest, it is their right to do so. And they need to do so because at this Absolutely. point it is not Whoever sits back and say, well, it's not me, it's just them, trust me, it's coming to you. It's coming. It's com because a president that does something that has never been done in the history of a country by postponing presidential elections, he's not afraid of doing something more. And that something more is coming. Today, he came out with an interview to the Associated Press in the U.S. and said that we, yeah, either, sit around, that. we either sit around the table or another organized power will take over. That organized power is the army. He's already announcing some kind of structured coup d'etat. So if you know someone that knows someone and they can speak on social media, they can protest, they can alert international institutions, this is the time to do it. Wait, I missed, I was recording when he, what did he say in that interview? Well, a summary that it was, that was the gist you of it? Either sit down around the table or another structured institution, another structured power will take over, hinting at the army, we're not dumb. <laughs> and that means But I that think that would just be him taking over because the army is so close to him. They would if if their if the army's intentions was to take over Senegal, they would have take, taken over Senegal a long time ago. He clearly has a strong relationship with whoever's leading. It's not like money, Mali, who like no oh, Mali. Is it Mali or Guinea? I think it's Mali. No. It's not like Mali who their army took over. You can clearly tell there's a disconnect in communication between the president and the army. I don't think that's what's happening in Senegal. 
we have one of the, I, I, I like to say that we have one of the best armies in Africa. We have one of the most structured armies in Africa. We have the, we do. We have, we have we have armies that represent is representing Senegal in with the in the United Nations Army. We have a very solid, you know, representation in international institution when it comes to you know conflicts and things like that. I don't think we have a bad army or bad police system or anything. I think the leaders, the people at top up there, have been corrupted by the president. Yeah, and, that's what I'm talking about. And and therefore the orders will never get down. Mm. I do not wish that on Senegal. I don't want Senegal to be taken over by the arm. I don't want that at all. And I think that our voice, our call for action, whether it's on social media, whether it's on the ground, will 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 make will bring some kind of change. Um yeah. But at the same time, I'm also worried because I think I've never seen power get to someone's head like this. You know, I am no, yeah. I'm not near Makisal, I'm not close to Makisal. But from his words, from the people around him, you can see that power has really gotten to their head. And the arrogance. And and exactly, that's the word. That's the word, arrogance. And they are showing it every single day, mm. in, insulting our intelligence. I think those, that, that's the word. Trying to find nice French word and legal words to cover whatever they're doing, thinking that, yes, these people are dumb, is, is just disrespect. And I think, unfortunately, talking about it, might help, but I, you know, I, I yeah. hope that it, it ends soon. It, this is not political. This is not about another candidate. It's not about, you know, um, wink, wink at the guy in, in prison right now. But yeah. it is not about them. It's not, a, this is about Senegal. This is about, people don't understand. When you, I don't know, you, you're from there. You love this country. You love the people. Yeah. You, in terms of, in terms of peace, you enjoy the country, right? And when it's time to give back to your country, you just decide to sit down because either you're somehow linked to the president, you know someone who knows him, or because uh, you might lose some customers because your business might take a hit because you, that, 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 that is not, it's, yeah. I, I don't understand. I don't know yeah. how to qualify that. Think, keep pushing the free Senegal hashtag on all social media yeah it'll make it'll make an impact and uh the people will always win abdullah Wad was way stronger than like at one point oh you think so oh well you know i was a, i was younger than was, was more of a political genius than like really? and when they decided so? to bring him down mm. he did not see what hit him like will go down in a in a different way, but probably in a worse way than Abdullah hmm. okay. The power of the people, like some people would say the revolution will not be televised. Mm. <laughs> the power of the people will hit him. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. I know it's it's a challenge because it's something happening in the moment, but it's, a, it's an important conversation for us to have because of right now, it's, in, it's even more important for our youth to be encouraged to participate in the government and in governance and having a sense of agency because we need to prevent certain things like this from happening. If we're more aware of the different laws and different policies being implemented and broken, we're at least able to address it. And, and so I thank you for raising awareness. And you actually taught me a lot of things about the history of you know the political system that I didn't even know. So I appreciate that. All right, so now it's time for some Khalad. And some Khalad, my emission, but I'm going to talk about it for you. 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 I'm going
you know, what kind of mom come system education system be you man ko pose ay question. So mom were not buying a new Senegalese or you know, yo yai kan excellent gay. Merci beaucoup. Euh wa comme ni ko hay wa sa ci anglais mom won jay la to do judo magé Senegal. Wa di ligay dekk fi ligay États-Unis depuis quelques années maintenant mais bon. Euh judo magé Senegal Uh, yero fo fo def li ka di def ha dem jangé ko jangé alquran football tawalu fi you know euh ba yalla di ñu yeug indifi ci benen dekk am di ligé ci éducation surtout du côté université yi di xol ñu ñi am indé yenn élèves yu am talent yi di leen indi ci yenn université américaine way nak euh indou ma kenn ku jigé sénégal damay damay ligé pour pour ben université di leen jappalé ci ci ñom sen effort ñu bëgg def ci ci aduna bi ci yenen um yenen dëkk yu yu lu sénégal yu lu afrique sax yenn say euh donc wa ci lool lu ñuy yëngu wa ci ci di ci gor gor lu euh voilà quoi merci yeah okay so comme xamné da nga am expérience ci you know education system yi in a mission dama bëgg xam bu fekké da amone élève bu bëggone génn sénégal jang ji lan nga koy conseiller pour you know be be um prepare application am be wala um programme yi mu wara xol lan moy lan nga ko mëna conseiller wa suñu système xam nga sénégal suñu système dafa xawa niro ak ak système français suñu lepp système français le presque like soit duñ ko copier soit mom lañu topando donc limay ñimay ñëk wax que ku bëgg jugé sénégal wala ku bëgg dem fenen sa jugé jugé sénégal rek dem fenen wala ku bëgg sa dé sénégal bëgg am baat ci ci aduna bi ci li ngay liggé bu ëlëgé da nga wara ñëk def ci ma ci lima yaakar moy jang anglais je pense que je pense que li nga wara ñëk def moy jang anglais légui nak après bu lako sa école mayul bu lako sa sa fi ngay jangé mayul ba mëno jang anglais fofu wala ñu lay jangal fofu doyul euh may fatali ko biñuy nek xalé ñun ñep école amu nañ prof anglais bu ñu doon jangal légui nak dang koy bëgg wala doko bëgg après nga top ci di ci jang di déglu yenn son yi man amna ñu ma bokku lon classe sénégal ñoo xamné buñu laké anglais nga fofu ni londres lañ jugé wala wala et new york parce que dañ ko bëggone diko def diko diko répéter sen kër yi tout donc mën na nek donc limay limay jëk wax moy jang anglais parce que du pour dem états unis kessé du pour dem angleterre kessé mais moy lak bo xamné aéroport bo wacc ci aduna bi wala fo wacc ci aduna bi di nga gis sax au moins bo réré ñu traduire dara def en anglais rarement ngay dem fenen euh yalla may lañu xeyna suñu suñu liggéey dinañ dem ci ñeen dëkk yi ba di nga gis ni rarement ngay dem benen dëkk sax yu melni ay ay fenn asie wala ci dëkku naar yi ñu traduire dara en français biñ koy bind seen lak ba pare def ko anglais donc lu jëra lu jëra jang la langue bu jëra maîtriser la euh moy ben benen bi nak après moy xamni aussi suñu système limu limu jëlé ci français yi bari na bo xamni ba liñuy jangal yeen say dafa xaw wessu aduna do aduna romb nako parce que di la jangal di la jangal ay littérature française gui de mo passant wa victor hugo yoyu delatul ken jangato ko et donc benen li gëna important moy choix wu nit li nga bëgg jang bu len top nit ki nan la wa dama bëgg def business dama bëgg def euh num tuddé ti littérature wala dama bëgg def euh économie yoy ay 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 filière yu yaatu 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 la ba taxna defal sa bokku recherche xam li nga bëgg jang xam yan 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 filière ñoo nek ci soufu lool non bu fekke économie mën na doon économie ak leneen mën na nek computer science mën na nek intelligence artificielle donc am na yeneen yu nek ci soufu yo xam ni nga jang ko poser question xol xol ba xol ba xam ni li suma koy jangé ak fi aduna be di dem ak ni aduna be di avancer mën na ci jëriñu mën na ci dund fi ak 50 ans 60 ans parce que jang lo xamné ay livre littérature euh 1960 ak 1950 ay poème ak ki sans way di wax deug yalla jëri yobu la fenn 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 ci aduna bi jamono ji et malheureusement suñu non malheureusement suñu université sénégal dañ gis ku ku paré am bac tay ñu nako fuñ la orienter mune man dañ ma orienter ki français wala ñu ma orienter littérature xol mo len ku la wax jangal lool da lay nax tekiwul daara ci aduna bi et donc li gëna important bañan bi moy xam li nga bëgg jang te xam nan la la mëna jëriñé bo bo paré diplôme yi nan la la mëna indul ci sa dund 
no, that's okay. That's good advice. <laughs> so you know, li li tama di dego mo ay siyatal eko binga kam ne di nila mo na accept nga apply for for me. Is the fuck mo asichi linga baga janga? That's so important. Now, so you system binek sa nagam. You're right. Lipple in jungle is about the French system. Then it's a it's a jungle. Such a France like neck. And so, born neck in the jungle in the French system. Don't comprehend any system. You know, we do have both the full research. And even when you're talking about economic, like what part of economic? Even my brother on um them grad school. Them and them about the jungle education. So professor, them and but we about education. You know, like there's different forms. You know, what's your research, Corey? Who you doing the research for? So, not just ngane dama jang economy pareche, but you have to really one nit kine yo linga baga jang da fa am bena specific category bo hamne dung chi am passion. You know, so I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. What do you langa yaka? How much you wah me langa yaka mo challenge inga hamne da fa bo kuchi education system in Senegal. Bon, challenge moi, il n'y a que changer. Changer une coupe depuis 1960, depuis le président Senghor n'y avait pas installé le système. Mais bon, tu l'as l'air de l'autre collègue. Donc, c'est le système pour ramener 6e, 5e, 4e, 3e. Après, avant de ça, dans les deux, le CM2, le CM2, le CM2, le CM2, le CM2, Imagine le nick que Django a tout le monde, octobre, le mois de juin ou le mois de juillet. Django a tout le monde, il n'y a pas de l'examen. À mon examen, il est redoublé. Il est redoublé encore. Il est encore un an pour qu'il soit redoublé encore. Wait, what? That's how it go? Ah, mais non, le Sénégal. Si tu échoué en 36e, 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 c'est comme ça. Si tu es venu à Django, tu es venu à Django, tu es venu à Django, tu es venu à Django. Et c'est ce qu'on comparé à ce système qui est venu à l'école. Il y a des examens qui sont très presque, parce que les gens ne sont pas très bien. Mais si tu es venu à l'examen, tu es stressé à zéro. Je l'ai dit. Quelqu'un qui est intelligent, quelqu'un qui est mousse, right? Donc, c'est ce que j'ai dit, le système de l'école, c'est ce que j'ai dit, 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 c'est qui a été connu, qui a été connu, sa papa, sa mame, sa tante, tout le monde sait qu'il y a eu des choses. Il y a eu beaucoup de choses, il y a eu des gâchés de sa famille. Et pourtant, je n'ai pas d'expérience avec les gens, ils ont eu des gens qui ont eu des classes, ils ont eu des gens qui ont échoué. Parce que le stress qui est en train, la pression qui est en train, ils ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens. Ils ont échoué, ils ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens. Ils ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens qui ont eu des gens. Donc, le système de système qui a été créé, c'est qu'il faut 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 Dengan 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 plus eh dengan dengan dugu je ay ay tiruar yo yo ambil gaya buat ke yo sen nanti terusim juga nuna bah di kota France le one wala Anglo wala filosofi yo ini le yo bu L buat ke yo ay matematik aksiyas nuna gaya ay nyu bu le S buat ke yo ay kontabiliti ekonomi nuna gaya ay nyu bu le J donc yo bak binga def ak bak ki am S di def ak bak ki def J di def dulu nampak bak bi Lagi lor, lo sistem bi dugu lene leh ciben kibo hamil yo moto fagin. Lagi yo bonye etas ni niki nela yo dah dah ngabu gedem jang medicine school. Ane ko man med school man mi. Mune lawa mana nek? Ane ko no man back ella. Mune lulu. Mune lulu feel lulu ni angge jang. Imagine lulu. Mana yo ngaji ke fuh? Denla tujuan ci ay post rope nela yo lirik ngamun. Yeah. Lirik ngamun ligi ci saat no munu ligi lenen. Ko ambak el Senegal, munu jang mesin. What? Lagi nak lawyer boh 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 deh mereka ni nyonya le langgup bagi jang, nyu upil le tegal le opportunity ni le langgup bagi deh. Deh mana jodoh dengan dengan judwat? Walegi kui tan el profesor ekolbi mualo betana. Ekolbi mualo jekijang. Jodoh tanah sebab 
ignore_time_segment_in_scoring yeah, no, because Senegal, you know what say? The flame incentive. How you say incentive in Wallop? There's no, like, I'm going to say incentive. They're going to figure it out. Forget it. figure out what's all of it. incentive. You let it out. You dig it. You dig all of it. You dig it. I don't care. I'm gonna say what I have to say. I'm gonna say what I have to say. I'm gonna say what I have to say. They're gonna understand. Incentive boy, new new job parallel. Purunga gis lenen, ham lenen. Yes, but I'm the movie. Okay, so then I got incentive. Purunga jang, no, bo pere jang. Purunga am liye isa, just a field. New job ko kene ko ham ne, amu diploma. Mo len ganal. You take the same same family, wala even bo maron def some research. Dapa amon ay Professor, you better have you want your equity, may they was like absent teachers. They lend on fa you know I'm salary, may down you on jungle, because they were like the pre the um principal's brother, well the president's cousin, you legging ham the nyingham the day I'm saying degree, well you I'm saying diploma. What incentive do you have to go to school? I'm legate is not guaranteed. Then ko ja pe binge neke chale, but binge am disetan disetan. But binge yego, but then ko ja pe jaro. You on lada ngawar dem jangi dong, then ngi kheji dem, di kheji dem, di kheji dem. Bo dem eba am bat ngawar dem universe. You on la, wala ngam bo ko bula ja pe miu bula ti ekol privé, ti ekol privé diploma yo yon ken rekone turu ko fen ken diploma yo yon. Then ngi skolen am na am na master un, am na master deux, master yo yon. Bo ko yo bo ti gen Senegal ngam dem Maroc, rek, you know the diploma be how many because the Ben organism will recognize the quality of the baby because I need I need new year rek create a school private the fire will have a thousand mil francs per month two thousand mil francs per month during jungle Ben professor will need to in the system public be my fire will need to have a superin man major will need to create jungle as a school private le you'll have to have a house so I believe mom salary because government will have to pay for it. Dotul privilege ya kala yoy jilain janga luba paske fof lek ufa khali subari. Dey wwer minyo ni ekol privé yi difa lek fof khali. Donk khali yip dem ti privé yi. Ti privé yi diplomi ken rekonet rupo. Donk sistem bi fi mou komase si yi gola gola matel na. Ba ki kaw. Li ki wara chanze mou bari. Sistem bo kham ni de nyo ko force ba pare jye mou ni ti chanje tous. Te lip lu nek ti pouti ti 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 postu ti kaw mou yi minister bi. Mui 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 super intendant mana inspektur bi, mui mui direktur ekor bi, lip dah fakawar dah fakawar rak tu ti politik, wala fakawar rak tu ti mboko, ba 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 day nak ada sah apa eksplike, ni yang kita ni kau kau ni mui direktur universiti, ni ada presiden mau kau efal, wala minister tel mau kau efal, jari orang orang dulu mana komplain apa lutak, bu 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 itu jangan gen ni ni dah ni kas, arna bi nyota kau, pas kau mboko presiden apa lo dong. Ifimu li 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 yahuti bir, 
de fa beuri tellement ba fu nek mën nga fa ki rek après nak légui li ñu def ñun moy ñun ñi liggé ci une ci ja walu jang et tout ça ben xol ben point lan nga fa mëna changer nga changer morom bu ñëwé xol fenen changer ñu bolo mais du du liggé buy 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 xey rek soti liggé bu la rek ay at la légui nak daf la koy jéral nga def ci du bay ci sawar sa morom bu ñëwé def ci lim ci man yeah oh my gosh okay Thank you for that. Now, when Lori is so, how much do you feel? How much more? One thing I would say is, education system in Senegal, they pay traumatized elevi. Now, man, so many halat, so many exam. Now, man, my elevi binga hamne exam ba hulchi man. Now, so many me man, so many me exam. Lip lip my fatte. They them. Man, man, I read. Man, I read a chapter. My pet a chapter. My pet a fatte. Lima read a chapter. So, exam ba hulchi ni ni me liman. Sumay khalat sama graduate school exam you ma jël the first time dama ko fail second time ma def ko and the grade was okay <laughs> but suma def won exam e bobu senegal ma dem ci école bi ñuy bind sama sama tour ci whatever di wax ñi ño passé exam e bi ba ñepp xam ñi passé ak ñi passé wul that's traumatizing i don't want people to know my business The new system, Bob, they don't yak any lolo normal, lolo normal, lodi. You may dig the new, could you defend Bob Pare? I'm no bat your home, no longer than dig a big terminal, moiling your approche, approche. Bob dig a moi jagasilen, prof, ham to new president du jury, president jury with data, how chicago ben a balcony. Put a hair fourth non gil papi abbey. They gil a foyum, when you approche, approche, new pokoma say, say, ye did down, ye did teat, and then mukoma say, leer. Number one hundred and forty. Ah. What hell, Lord? So what hell? One forty. Munna skip one forty one. Skip one forty two. Skip one forty three. Then by one fifty. Seventy k. One forty one by one forty nine. Can amul? You put down ukham. E donk. Lord, usi lujara lujara. Mem nini nini johe resulta sa manam. Il faut avoir des rouges, des rouges. Ah, d'accord. Donc, l'école n'est pas faite. Non, non. Tu as l'examen. Oui, tu as l'examen. Il n'y a pas faite. Il n'y a pas d'examen. Il n'y a pas d'examen. Il n'y a pas de résultat. 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 Il n'y a pas de Oh my gosh. Budget ay rek nga jeke jeke di deg approché approché. Sa aduna bi yeb tukki. Hmm. Ñu wax turu kenn koku mëna jëre jëf serigne Touba. Ku nek ak ni ngay célébrer. N'est-ce pas? Ku nek ak ni ngay célébrer. Mais bu ñu waxé numéro 142. Ah. Pour wax 150. Ça veut dire que 143, 144, 145, ba 149 ñoo ñëpp éliminer. Nini kama asa di daanu. Sabri ke mimi nini juhe sinu rezulta. Sa kwa wase. Apre boko wahe chiko hamni tamu na kodena la. Ah sa hai. Yo yu futu wapla. Me. Khena amo nu nugan. Nugan rafet. Nini pata. Legi nak sa chanje. Paske nye nini debutu legi. Depi kelke zane. Al gouvernement bi. Izon fe. Sistem bo hamni. Munga yone rezulta ye par SMS. Boye. Yi denge yone yone sa tekst. Wahle if you admit it or not. Me. Pe legi. Pe legi. Il y a des points qui peuvent changer. Il y a des points qui peuvent changer. Mais c'est... Si on est au Sénégal, c'est ce qui est le temps. Parce qu'on est en train de se mettre, parce qu'on est en train de se mettre. Oui. Il y a des points qui peuvent se mettre. Oui. Ok. C'est horrible. Donc, ok. Je veux dire... Ce qui est le plus important dans la situation où il y a des Sénégal qui sont en train de se mettre. Bien sûr, ils ont vu que Macky Sall a eu des plus élections. Pada internet itu nih, Amerika ini aku immediately. Tuan mahu saya kalah cilol. Ah, kau juga wakul. Lelai ni nak kuno pun komplis nggak? Lola, 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 gaya dia wah jiran susu sih. Kuno pun komplis nggak? Muno judo Senegal, mage Senegal, Amelip Senegal, kau macam sial. Amelip Senegal, Senegal jauh lelip. Gue wal buti kau, gue wal buti kau. Development ni Senegal. Wah, dua buti kau ni sama yang ni aku cie. C'est impossible. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui ont été en train de se faire. Je pense que c'est ce qui est le plus important. 
fiñu tol ni ni nga xamni ñu ci dégg action bi ñu ci dégg affaire événement yi di xew chaque jour ñu koy sétane ku ci jappul mën nga ñu abal nga may ñu nga may ñu ba ñu paré ñu soga ñëwaat ci yow mais xamal ni ku ci jappul instant bi ni ah wolof ñay de li lu saga du du ki mais wolof day wax le mot bado la ku ci jappul mën nañ la wowe mën nañ la wowe bado la parce que fo xamni pench bi la yeen ñepp yeena fay yewondo di defando di indendo bu dara jappé pench mi ñepp waro ñu jugando def ci dara légui nak nga nek amerique comme ñun nga nek sénégal nga nek fenen ku nek amna no mëna jappé euh utiliser free sénégal twitter wala facebook wala instagram euh bind letter gis na ay jamono 2021 la won xaw ma nga doon bind letter เอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อ
and uh, with time we'll see yeah okay all right and then with that what i'm going to say makisal disappointment uh when we were electing him we had hope you are the second person that said disappointment by the way so keep, well, keep going <laughs> disappointment. because we had hope we really had hope he is yeah. He is he he was supposed to represent the typical Senegalese success story. Jange suñu école lek suñu xaaliss dem nek president politique ñu def la li nga falu dem ci mom lañ amone yaaka he was supposed to be the man he was supposed to be the the the, the definition of of yeah you know, we can do it but unfortunately ah ngour baxul disappointment Disappointment, deception, like you said. Deception. <laughs> okay, okay. And so then I will ask, I want to say Jay Z. Uh, I. You're like, I don't care enough. <laughs> I, honestly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> back in the days, back in the days, some years ago, when we did glue, you know, music. US rappers maybe but yeah good for him okay so he is undecided yeah. um <laughs> what what music do you listen to uh i try not to listen much to music but i do listen to unfortunately i do listen to a lot of wally sick <laughs> oh okay that's good nothing yeah. wrong with that nothing's yeah. wrong with that yeah. all right so um okay so the next person i'm going to ask is nick duff you know nick duff the rapper what are your, what's your thoughts on him or first first word uh, that comes to mind uh, but He knows what's right. That was how do that look look grave it. The fact is an egg. I'm yellow make up bat. Yeah. That's it. Bunya put the phone come mom. Hen is a fin you yeg money fe banya yaksi. Te 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 hamna hen nit nyo hamne hamna inko. Mm. all muscular and rapper and everything he's a he's a proud Senegalese citizen no like no different i i re- i listen to his to his to his music he's not the best rapper that ever existed in senegal but mm-hmm. he's probably the one that he's he's a proud Senegalese citizen yeah and he he has an impact and he uses his platform to make sure that he's advocating you know like sometimes his words are harsh but they're honest so what if I'm regular yeah yeah okay so then the last person i'll say is wally because he's been in the news a lot and i'm curious to hear what what word do you think of when you hear wally <laughs> Yeah, musuma dem conseil ram vi privé mi intéressé wu ñu mi jox xaliss ñu mi andal intéressé wu ñuma musique bi moma ci intéressé okay côté ambiance bi dégg mm. musique bi jeexna xawma fu mi teggé musuma fa dégg tank euh <laughs> musique bi lay déglu té topando rek ak ay copain yi mo tax ma dugg ci but i like it musique bi daani he's he not Papa Mago Dako no way Junior Yon Papa his Chonsek texts were way better than his 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 texts. But ambiance to Senegal Hen and Dinako Mumla Diglu. But but you know, I don't have any opinion about him as a person. Yeah. What what what's a word that comes to mind when you think of Ali Sek? Dom Chonsek. No. <laughs> That goes a long way. So I got neck of dome do when the light I thought you were gonna say ambiance. That's what I was like. Oh, okay, he's gonna say ambiance. That whole ambiance in I got the other but 
Well, ah, next to Dom John Tech, mom, yeah, John Tech. I love his. He's my favorite, favorite Senegalese singer. Uh, I just love his vibe. So, next to Dom John Tech, love that next to you. That next to you, yeah, next to yeah, 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 for the new music. You are shady. You, you. It's like a classy. It's such a classy shade that you don't catch it. You gotta really. <laughs> Like, it's your facial expressions that's the problem <laughs> you over here like hmm. I'll try to hide it <laughs> very, very classy shady you know what they be saying them people that's nice nasty I could tell I really would I would like to see you you know what I would like to see you mad in a professional setting like I really feel like you will violate everybody in there so professionally <laughs> they're gonna I'm not to very move. good at it yet I have no? a very good friend who's a politician Mm. Oh, in in the US that I like to text sometimes and say, how would you say this without um, my African side coming up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. My problem is Luma Wahul, my face is gonna say it. So I be in meetings and I'm like, and I it's like the New York coming out of me, but I'm trying to hold it in. I mean, my, I'm thinking my face looks like like I'm just yeah, you listening. gotta you gotta work on your poker face. No, I don't have one. I don't know how to do it. Like, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. If you piss me off, you're going to know. Okay. So let's do the second game in the last part. And this is pretty much I'm going to shuffle cards and pick a question, random question, and then we can have a discussion about it. You can answer first, and then I'll answer. But it's just let's see what they say. I'm going to shuffle you more more All right. Let's see what they see. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Bad jam. <laughs> no, Jamala. I, will, I I had taken out all of the crazy cards. All right. These were the, yeah, I took all the I took all the crazy cards out. These are the more so nicer ones. Okay. Cool. So it says your significant other is on his or her. Well, your significant other is on her deathbed and their side piece walks in what do you do do you focus They're on wet. this <laughs> <laughs> do i need to wear some kind of do i need to wear my american hat or can i stay yeah put your, we're not in senegal right now yeah because uh, <laughs> the way my brain functions I, the side piece is just a word that does not exist in my dictionary Side let piece. Switch, let me switch the question. All right, let me switch the question. Are you gonna answer? You want you want to answer? I ask another question. What are you gonna do if they walk in? Are you gonna to continue to focus on your significant other? Do you leave? Do you ask the side piece to leave? Give me, may God. I don't even know what to say. All right. <laughs> what? Oh my god, that was perfect. That was perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. So this I'll pick another one. You're driving home after a long day and see someone stuck on the side of the road. You also notice a Confederate flag on the buffer sticker. What's your next move? Do you pull over and help? Do you slowly drive by to make sure they're okay? Do you call the police to help? Or do you mind your business and let God handle it? As someone who's been verbally verbally abused by a Confederate flag owner holder, wait, hold on, because I want to hear the I want to hear the story, because I have my own Confederate flag story. So I want to I want to know I, what they do to you. I was in college again in a small town in Missouri. Me too. And and uh, I was with a friend, uh, and on our way to the bar slash club, and uh, this man decided to get out of his pickup truck with his um, Confederate flag stickers and all, and call us the N-words, asked us to go back to where we come from, um and uh, well, I don't need to tell my story anymore. You just told my story. <laughs> and okay, and was you. ready to was ready to fight us. Um so for being yeah. black. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it's small town Missouri again. Yeah. So. But um, so if I saw that, what the girl, <laughs> I I probably would, depending on if it's during the day, I probably would drive by and not. <laughs> If you if it's somewhere very very dark and that person is really asking for help, yeah. I would call the cops first before <laughs> before even interacting with that person. Uh, I am not putting everyone in the same box. It's just that based on my experience, trauma. now yeah. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, no, I'm I'm laughing about it, but um, I agree with you, yeah. honestly. I agree with you. I would just drive by, to be honest. I'm, yeah. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it for the people. I would drive by because my experience with them has been very hostile, and I prefer to just not interact. And I honestly think they would drive by me right on the side of the road, too. So I don't know. And I, I literally have the same exact story. I was at a university in a predominantly, it was a predominantly white institution, really small rural town in upstate New York. And we had this truck that used to drive up and down our campus with a huge Confederate flag sticking out the back. Like it was the big, you know, them flags that they lift up. He had on the back of his truck and then his license plate said, you better redneck arise. Mm -hmm. So we would at the black student unions, at the African student association, this truck, we would, it would come up in every conversation. We did protests to the school. They literally would tell us because the road that he's driving on is a um it's a city road that cuts through our school mm. they can't stop him from cutting through the school with that flag and the sign so he literally just do that and then and he he picked the perfect times it would be like 12 o'clock one o'clock when all the students are out and as soon as i see the truck i'd get traumatized because of different things that i've heard them do to people walking yeah so i would just prefer not to interact not because i don't like them or i'm generalizing them but just because from my experience I don't think they like me much, so. No, mm, trust me, they don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. All right. Well, I'm happy I asked you that question instead. <laughs> I want to absolutely thank you for joining the platform. But before we say bye, I want to know if there's uh, any contact info you'd like to share with the people, if they want to get in contact with you. Uh, like social media or anything, and if you have anything upcoming that you would like to share with them. Uh, well, well, well. Thank you. First, it was it was a pleasure, you know. Um, since the, the 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 time we've been talking about doing this and that and this for for us, yeah. for general, for the for education and all that, it's it's just a pleasure mm -hmm. to to kind of discuss about some of these topics. Um, and uh, as far as contact, if someone needs me. They can connect professionally on LinkedIn. Mamo mm -hmm. yeah, is easy. Um, social media is not really my my thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm on there, but yeah, who knows? Private. I only post stuff about my Kisal these days. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I would say LinkedIn is is the yeah. way to connect. And and again, um, uh, hopefully one day we 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 can achieve all these things we. We talked about for for our dear Senegal. That's just the, absolutely at yeah. the end of the day, uh, whether we're here or or back home. The the goal is to always um, have an impact in in our society where we came from. Um, and uh, yeah. inshallah, may may God uh, allow us to to do that. But thank you, thank you again for for having me. No, I thank you for joining. I really appreciate you educating us, letting us know about your history. One thing that is a constant theme with our conversations is your passion for Senegal and just being able to at least help and provide different educational experiences that are of equity and you know equal access. And so that's the part that I absolutely appreciate about you. And I wanna highlight that because you definitely, you walk the walk, you talk the talk and a lot of the work that you're doing, it's, it's making sure that the fields that you have concerns with, that you're directly being a part of the solution. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to complain from your couch or not um, say anything about it, but you definitely advocate for what you believe in, as people can tell throughout the conversation, you know, you have a way of making sure that 
if you have a concern, you voice it, but you are also a part of the solution. So I really, really appreciate you. And then I definitely wanted to highlight you as one of our stars because you work for what you believe in, but you also are trying to make sure that no matter what, that Senegal is in the forefront, even with the different projects that we talk about that I absolutely want to do. Um, but I definitely think that was worth highlighting. So I wanted to give you give you your flowers now. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, but thank you for You're joining. doing great. You're doing great yourself. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, all right. So I will let you all go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are listening to us in any other uh, podcast platforms, just make sure to follow us on social media at Uncensored Journey Podcast and Simply Maze underscore thoughts on Instagram and TikTok. I will put your LinkedIn in the description if anyone wants to get in contact with you. But thank you all for joining. I hope you have a good day.